Hi. Um, today I'm talking to Stuart Haycock. Stuart is Managing Director of a UK company, Airborne Industries. And today we're going to be talking about aerostats. Hello, Stuart, and welcome. Good afternoon, Tony. Right. First of all, could you give me a little bit of, of background to uh, Airborne in Industries, the company? Yep. We've been supplying aerostats to military users for many years now. We supply small systems for um, police observation and general security use, but we also provide larger parachute training balloon systems. And in between in that range, there are multi payload aerostats, small, medium and large. All right, I think I've jumped out one of your um, parachute ones. <laughs> Yes, a long time ago. <laughs> many, many have. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, Stuart. Can you tell me what the relative strengths of aerostats are uh, compared to other airborne surveillance systems? One of the key advantages you're going to have is that one is that it's fixed. It flies there on the tether. It carries quite large payloads, and it will loiter for days and potentially weeks at a time. So you get a long view of pattern of life and long range incidents and, and things going on around you. Okay, okay. Uh, where do aerostats fit into the uh, into border security protection? For border security, <clears throat> it's a mixture of the potential for radar, for long range camera vision, for pattern of life largely, being able to watch unblinking for a week to see how things change or don't, to watch and observe day, night, who's approaching, who's moving, and collating that data down on the ground. And you can also mix your, your sensors. So if you have radar, you can also use um, electronic surveillance, interception, and you can bring all of that down into one place give you a big long view of what's going on okay so loitering is the loitering capability loitering. is the key yeah. to 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 it their is. their uh, their strengths okay and cost uh, and uh, right okay uh how high can you fly them conventional aerostats will go very high but uh anything up to 10 20 000 feet but the higher you go the bigger you've got to be and cameras at 20,000 feet aren't much use. If you want, as we've been asked before, facial recognition cameras from 5,000 feet, you need a top of head recognition camera. So you have to mix your payloads and your mission to what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so your... high isn't always best. Right, okay. So in your opinion, mm -hmm. what is the optimum sort of uh, altitude for for border surveillance and what sort of range is it is that ideal height going to give you uh, ideally you need, really need to start by understanding your mission where you are what your terrain is like and what sort of threat you're trying to observe if you have a relatively low technology foe who's coming in overnight you can go quite high if all you want to see is an infrared blob. If you have a more complex um, foe, then you need to be upping your sensors, maybe going somewhere between two and 5,000 feet is usually quite enough to give you anything up to kind of 50, 60 miles of range, but your sensors aren't gonna pick that up. So there's little point in going much higher unless you're in radar. Right, okay, okay. So how long can you stay up? Normally, small balloons will stay up for a few days. Larger balloons will stay up for a few weeks. What you tend to do, all balloons will lose gas over time. No matter what they're made of, helium's a very slippery gas. So you design it to accommodate the gas losses that you have over that loitering period. Okay, so how, how do you get the power up to your sensors uh, and the data down? Well, you can use, if you've got small low powered sensors, you can use batteries. Largely people are using complex tethers which carry copper up for your power and 
fibers, fiber optics to bring your data down. That way your, your payloads are consistently powered all the time and your data is coming down over you know, massive data highways. Okay, and have you used, uh, have you combined the, them with, with solar power, for instance? You can try solar. Solar's heavy at the moment. There's not much of very, very thin, very flexible stuff up there, but solar is becoming an option. Things are changing slowly, and it's also very expensive. Big cameras, they're going to need about 30 amps, and you won't get that from solar. So you have to look at your overall payload package, your altitude that you want to fly at, and then work out what sort of uh, power sources you're going to try and use. Right, okay. So um, what sort of lift gas do you uh, generally use? I think you've already mentioned well, it. But, but I have, indeed. Conventionally, nowadays, we use helium. Historically, it was always hydrogen, which was operated safely by hundreds, if not thousands of balloons. But technology moves on and the inert gas was preferable. But helium does have its issues these days. It's getting harder to get. There are more pressures for the sources of helium. And so the industry is beginning to look at hydrogen. Certainly for airships, it's a useful power source as well as a lift gas. Right, okay, okay. Um, so what should you, if you're in the border security uh, community and you're looking to use aerostats, what sort of things should you be considering when selecting uh, an aerostat? Really, you need to fully understand your threat. You need to understand where in the world you are, because uh, like any other aircraft, heat and altitude mean you need more power. And in the case of an aerostat, that's lift gas. So if you're in a very hot climate, you're going to need a slightly larger balloon to achieve the same lift. And if you're going higher, you're carrying obviously a much heavier tether, a 5,000 foot tether. You, <clears throat> depending on your power and data paths, you could be lifting half a ton of tether. So your balloon gets much bigger. So understanding where you are is important. Your mission, defining your mission is key. Where you are, what you're um, trying to achieve, that will dictate the sort of sensors that you want to carry. And the balance of altitude and range will give you the kind of optimum solution. Terrain as well, as long as if it's beautiful and flat and it's a desert, you're obviously going to see a great deal further than if you're in rocky terrain. You may need to go a bit higher, but you won't expect to get the same fidelity of, of data from your payload. All right, okay, thank you. And what type of aerostats are there out there available for this role? There's, there's lots depending on your role. <clears throat> Down at the bottom end, uh, in terms of size, there are small spherical aerostats. Spherical aren't as stable. You can throw a little net on it to try and make it more stable, but spherical aerostats tend not to be terribly stable, but they're small and packable. I think there are, for a few years now, there have been man packable systems, but that's one man to carry the aerostat, one man to carry the payload, and one to carry the lift gas, which is the heaviest part of the system, believe it or not. And that goes up through smaller, moving into kite balloons, which are the more traditional type, which generate their own lift, and then up to the, the much, much larger pressurized systems. So there's, there's a range of solutions and selecting the right one depends on your mission, how fast you want to deploy, what sort of infrastructure you have, what sort of payloads you're carrying. These all contribute to give you the broader picture of your need. Right, okay. So how do they compare then uh, in, um, operationally? What are the advantages of an aerostat over, say, drone systems? They work well together, actually. And aerostats are more often being considered now for range extenders for drones. The aerostat will give you the long view picture. And if you see a threat, you can send a drone out to examine it more closely. So they actually work very well together. But of course, your range and payload is limited on a drone where it's not on an aerostat. So we've been working with some mining companies who want to put an aerostat up to get the big picture. And then they'll send out drones 
if they see anything that could be a threat. They're a good combination. Absolutely. Okay. And um, what in terms of cost? You you mentioned it earlier. What are what are the advantages of uh, using uh, aerostats over other systems? Overall, they are less demanding of maintenance and generally not as expensive. The very biggest aerostats, they're going to be costing you 50 to 70 million for an installation. But a small trailable aerostat, we've supplied these down to 20 or 30 thousand pounds as a complete system. So it really depends where you want to be on the scale. But of course, there's the infrastructure as well. Once you have a bigger system, you need crews and they need training. You have payloads that need supporting and you need a general level of infrastructure around the site to be able to maintain it. Scissor lifts, forklifts, you're lifting heavy cylinders of gas. You need replenishment of supplies. There's a broader infrastructure picture that the client should be considering. Okay, and how long, say one of the, say one of the, the, you, the this, if the, uh, aerostat you have in the background there. Yeah. Uh, how long will a system like that last? The ground handling system you see there with its hydraulic winches and electronic control systems is a long term item. That's a 10 years plus. The aerostat envelope itself, the larger aerostats are using materials now which can be guaranteed for up to five years. The smaller ones with the lighter fabrics, maybe two years. So you'd be changing your envelope subject to lack of damage every few years. Well, okay. Well, Stuart, thank you. That, uh, that's uh, been really interesting. It's a question that comes up quite a lot at the conferences that we, we hold, as you know. Uh, and uh, I believe you're going to be doing an article for us in the next issue. I am indeed. Hoping to clarify some of these issues for the, the benefit of your users. Okay, fantastic. Readers. Okay. <laughs> Thanks again. You take care Thanks, and hope to see you soon. We'll, yes, we'll speak again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.